Grade 6 math number 2.3, multiply decimals and where to put the decimal point. To correctly put the decimal point in the product, we just count the total place value hops in the equation and hop that many times in the product. I'm going to show you a model first. If we wanted to multiply 1.2 yards by 1.4 yards, we start off with our whole 1, okay, that's this square right here, that's 100, and then for the point 2, we have our 2 tenths right here, here's a 10 and here's a 10, that's 2 tenths, then we have 4 tenths for the other one, so there's 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 times going across, but because we're not multiplying 1.4 times 1, see, then we would be like this. We're multiplying it by 0.2, so we actually need these little pieces of 8 right here tacked onto the end. Do you see that? So make sure, if you do this with models, that you tack on your little piece on the end. Now we can add the 100, the 20, the 40, and the 8, and we get 168, see? We can also multiply them, the 1.2 times the 1.4. We do 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 1 is 4, and then we move over to the tens place. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. We total them up and get the 168, but we need to count the hops in the equation. 1, 2. And that's how many go in the product. 1, 2. So we have 1.68. So using a model, we can see the parts that need to be counted. We can see that there's four pieces here, okay? But we can add them, but it's easier to multiply when counting large numbers, okay? So now, let's talk about Tala. If she raked leaves to make money and she was paid $15 for each lawn and did those 23 lawns, how much did she make? So we can round the 23 to 20 and take the decimal point and the zeros off and just do 15 times 20 to get a quick estimate. And what we can actually do is do the 2 times 15 here and just add the 0 on the back end because we're multiplying 10s, see? So it would be about $300. And we didn't use a decimal point in the estimate, so there isn't one in the product. This will actually help us check our answer. We know it should be around $300, maybe a little more because it should have been a 23, right? We could actually add the 3 times 15 onto that and know how much it was. So if we do 15 times 23, we're going to start with the 3, and you can see it's in blue, and we're going to multiply in the 1's place. 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 5 is 15, we carry the 1 and put the 5 down, and then 3 times 1 is 3, and the extra 1 is 4. So we have 4, 5, 0, 0 for the 1's place. So now the, the green is the 10's place. Because we're multiplying the 10's place, we start putting the answer in the 10's place. See that? 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 5 is 10, we carry the 1 and put the 0 down, and then 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 more is 3. Now we add them all up. 0, 0, 5, 4, and 3. We count our hops in the problem. 1, 2. We put that many in the product. 1, 2. And we see she made $345 from raking leaves. See? So however many decimal places are in the equation, is how many will be in the product. You just need to count how many hops are coming over. You don't count starting here. You don't count this place. You don't say one, two, three. That's why you have to count the hops. I get upset when people say, you know, count the decimal places because a lot of times the kids start counting this one as one. And it's not one. You have to count the hops. One hop, two hop. So there's two decimal places. I don't want anyone to get confused thinking they start here and say one, two, three. See? So count hops, don't count places, all right? All right, so if we have a lot of decimal points, it will still work counting the hops and it's, it'll make your life easier. If you've got a big decimal point number like this, like 43 ten thousandths times two and fifteen hundredths, we do the blue ones place. Technically, it's hundredths place for here, but because it's ten thousandths, I'm just going to call it the ones so that you know what I'm talking about. Five times three is fifteen. We carry the one and put the five down. Five times four is twenty, plus the one is twenty-one. We carry the two and put the one down. 
5 times 0 is 0, and 2 more is 2, and then 5 times 0 is 0. Now it's the green tens place turn. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 0 is 0. That was easy. Now we're going to do the, the 2 here. 2 times 3 is 6, and because we're answering in this column, that's the column where the answer goes. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 0 is 0, and 2 times 0 is 0. You have to make sure you don't count your old carrying over regrouping numbers because that was from the previous number. You don't want to mistakenly count it to the next number you're multiplying. Now we just add these all up, drop the 5, 1 and 3 is 4, that's 10, 11, 12, carry the 1, put the 2 down, we've got 9, we've got 0, and we've got 0. So how many hops do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 total hops in the equation. So there's going to be 6 total hops in the answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our answer is going to have the decimal point over here. See? So easy to count the hops. All right? If you see something that says to evaluate, and then they want you to rewrite it as a multiplication problem, because remember, we learned so far that when the variable is right next to the number, it means multiply. Well, now, because we're doing a higher level of math, we can't use an x to say times anymore, because that could be a variable. If you had point zero seven x y, it looks like you have two variables there. So we can't use an x anymore. We've got to be a little bit more grown up about our math and use the dots or use parentheses, right? Or just put it next to it, all right? We could do it when we're going this way and stacking it, but when you're making a sentence, if you put an x there, they're going to think the x is a variable, okay? So if you've got 0 .07 and y is 5, then we just do 0 .07 times 5. 5 times 7 is 35. We carried the 3, put the 5 down. 5 times 0 is 0, and the 3, we've got 1, 2 hops, so it's 0.35. So we could have written it as y, and then the 0 .07 in parentheses, or we could have just said 0 .07 with the dot for the multiplication sign, and then the y. Okay? So now, I want to show you what happens when we multiply by powers of 10, and how the decimal point moves towards the right. Okay? And then you can try this on your own. If we have a number like 0.314, and you multiply it by 10, I'm not going to go through each single one, but I'm going to show you what happens, because you know how to do multiplication. If we have 0.314, and we multiply it by 10, the decimal point is going to get moved towards the right, because we're multiplying it by this whole number of 10. See? When we multiply it by 100, the decimal point is going to get moved two places to the right. See, we started with 0.314, and now we have 31.4. It went from here to here. See? Because of these two zeros, these two place values. If we multiply it by 1,000, it's going to move the decimal point behind the 4. See that? It slowly went from in front of the 3 to behind the 3, and then when we multiplied by 100, it went behind the 1, and when we multiplied by 1,000, it went behind the 4, and if we did it again, if we multiplied it by 10,000, we're going to have to put a 0 there as a place value, because now the decimal point's way back here, and if we multiply it by 100,000, we're going to have to add another 0, because now the decimal point's way back here. Now, do you know what would happen if we multiplied it by 0.10? it would actually move the other way. So if we multiply it by 0 0.10, the decimal point's going to move this way. If we multiply it by 10, then the, dec the decimal point's going to slowly move this way as we increase the zeros. So if we did it by 0 0.01, it would move even farther to the left. And if we multiplied it by 0 0.001, it would move even farther to the left. So because we're multiplying it by whole numbers, 10, 100, 1,000, it's slowly moving that way to make the number a bigger number. See? If you've got 314 thousands and you've got 1,000 of them, it's going to give you a whole number because you're making this a bigger number. See? So you're pushing that decimal point that way to the right. 
If you multiply it by a decimal, you're going to make it a smaller product, and the decimal point is going to go that way, making the product smaller and smaller and smaller. See? So that's what I wanted to show you. So multiplying decimals, count your hops, all right? Don't let it intimidate you. It's really just the same as doing regular multiplication. You just need to count the hops in the equation and put that many in the answer, all right? And so you know, when you estimate, it helps you check the answer to make sure it's right. That's all, okay? I'll see you next video. Keep up the good work. Bye.